Hey and welcome to Neverwinter with Aragon. So here I want to cover my Module 29 Cleric Arbiter build. Keep in mind this is something to work towards and it will give you maxed out 90% in all of your damage stats along with over 106,000 item level. There'll be a link to this document in the video description below. But ultimately, it is designed to serve as a solid baseline, which you will then tweak and optimize depending on specific content and groups you play with. If you go to end game particularly, you'll want to be checking out the optimization section because other team members can give you bonuses and working around those will be to your benefit to improve your damage by, for example, switching these weapons over to damage boost ones and similarly this ring. There'll be timestamps on the play bar below where you can skip to any section you're most interested in. We begin with race and ability scores and I recommend Wood Elf here for the crit strike. As for the ability scores, be sure to choose Dexterity and Intelligence, and then while leveling up, you'll also choose just Dexterity and Intelligence. From here, we go to the most important part, your power setups. We're going to cover first multi-target and then single target. Now, starting with multi-target, this is what power setup I would use to maximize your damage against multiple enemies. You will be using Searing Javelin and Dawn Haunting Light with the Light Speedy Defeat there, and then also Chains of Blazing Light. This is more of an optional one, but it will give you a damage boost if you do get it cast. Some people I'm sure hate the cast time on it, and myself included, and so can refrain from not bothering to use it. You might just be better off having, say, Forge Master Flame here instead of it and whenever you run into some tanky enemy who's left after you've killed most of the enemies you can go ahead and use that on it. What you want to be careful of is your stacks up here. You have Radiant Shift and you have Burning Shift and each of your encounter powers give those. Your Searing Javelin will give you Burning and your Daunting Light Radiant. So here we can use our Searing Javelin that gives us 2-2 two, two now. We can use a Daunting. We're now 2-3. We then need to use another Javelin before we use another Radiant. And now we're at 3-4. If we just use a Javelin even into the air, not hitting anything, we trigger our perfect balance, which is this ability, which fills up our Divinity. And that's going to be very important while you're using your abilities to then stagger them and make sure that you can get that benefit to be able to restore all of that Divinity. Otherwise, you're going to run into issues and just yeah, miss out on an absolute ton of damage. You're going to be stuck with basically no divinity and having to use at wills. And what you would use is conflagrate. And when you go and cast this, you obtain three of these pips and then you just channel divinity to consume those pips to get divinity back. And then you'll be able to cast your abilities. Like here we had to cast either Daunting Light or my Chains again because we need to pay attention to these pips up here. Here we can cast like Chains and we're at 4-4 four, four, back to full divinity. Just be aware that the way Javelin works is it's going to shoot towards where you're, you're looking basically but it's just going to go horizontally out from you. So it's not necessarily going to aim very well if you're like on like rough terrain, like here. We not might not be able to hit those dudes because it just goes flying up in the air. But yes, again, do mess around with your abilities yourself and just make sure to make use of all what you have. Now, using chains first can be advisable to trigger Doomsayer as you will gain that benefit when casting it. As you see here, just a 10% damage buff then to all of our abilities. And so it doesn't really matter what we hit everything will deal 10% more damage. It is definitely a class to get used to as it plays very differently to other classes in the way that you really just have to be careful on what abilities you're using and when. You have to be taking advantage of perfect balance to get that divinity back. You can't just spam everything out carelessly and expect to do good damage. As for your daily power, you generally just use Flame Strike and you can use that after you've obtained like your Radiant Judgment after casting like a Searing Javelin as that Radiant Judgment will increase the damage of that power. So again, just pay attention what stacks you have and which ability you need to use next. 
But that is ultimately it for multi-target. Experiment around for yourself and just practice. From here, we go to our single power setup and it's a super simple switch. You're just going to use Forge Master's Flame instead of Searing Javelin and Prophecy of Doom instead of Chains. And then you also, depending on your build, will want to switch to Expanded Faith instead of Doomsayer. However, it all relies upon one bonus, these arms. They can give you 25% more divinity. You want to either have the ultraviolet ones, the star forge ones from the moon dancer, or even the depth forge ones you can just about make work. Not as ideal though. And so there are three locations you can get them. All master content though, the ultraviolet ones from the Imperial Citadel. With that increased divinity, you can have a different rotation. And so you would use expanded faith. You can see here exactly what I mean. One rotation is just going to be a thousand divinity. And with that, you're going to use your doomsayer and your divine equilibrium, as you really won't make much benefit with expanded faith by itself. You need the arms and you can see what rotation you would follow. And you have to follow this strictly in order to take advantage of perfect balance and to time your abilities to maximize their damage output. And then the artifact call when you do have the arms and the extra divinity will allow you to output basically another full set of encounter powers, allowing you to output even more damage. And then outside of the artifact call, you could see the rotation is as follows. You'll do that full set and then repeat it again before going to the next artifact call. And you can see the massive difference between having a thousand divinity and having 1400 divinity. You'll be able to cast an awful lot more encounter powers. You'll need to practice this. You cannot really change in this rotation as it revolves so much around perfect balance and triggering that at the right time in order to maintain your divinity to be able to keep casting encounter powers. So back to the artifact call, let's give you a bit of a demonstration. We start Start with our daily power, then we go our Prophecy of Doom, Artifact, Forge Masters, Daunting, Forge Masters, then we use our Belt Item and Mount Power, then we use that Daunting, we get our Perfect Balance, and then we use three sets of each encounter power, and we're at the stacks as you see in the top left, 3-3. Three, three. And then you get a bit more Divinity, and then you get back to Perfect Balance triggering, and you get to 1-1, one, one, and then you're using your Prophecy of Doom again, and that full rotation of five sets of each in Encounter Power. In between here, you do need to channel Divinity slightly, but other than that, you can keep spamming all of your encounter powers to pretty much keep outputting a lot of damage. You have to do like one conflagrate there, and that's about it. And again, you can see that full rotation here. This is the artifact call, and then this is outside of the artifact call. And you just follow that very strictly, and you'll, again, need to practice that. In the document, you'll see the power setup, and you'll see the rotation sheets here in tables. Now, I definitely need to give some credit to Pro Goofy, who streams on Twitch. You can follow his channel. I'll have a link in the video description below. He plays Arbiter on an end game level, completing all of the latest content and does super well there on Xbox, outputting a ton of damage on his Arbiter. And he follows very similar rotation to this, and he helped me analyze and set up this rotation for myself for my testings, which now I'm putting in this build for you guys. So, yes, there is a lot to learn, and it's quite a challenge here on Arbiter. But you can do very well when you have all these right conditions and follow these steps accordingly. But from here, we're going to go to the rest of the build. How can you set it up to get all of those maxed out damage stats along with some good damage bonuses? Be aware again, it's for solo damage and be sure to check out later on the group optimization section for when you go and play with end game groups. So we begin with our gear here and you can see in the document exactly where it's all coming from. Again, be aware you can get away with using the arms that come from the latest dungeon, the ones that give you extra 20% maximum divinity. If you do run the dungeon on advanced mode, you will get instead of this mythic gear, this legendary stuff. And it's very similar. 
These arms will also give you maximum divinity. You will be able to nearly follow the same rotation, but you will have to like channel divinity once in between before you can get your perfect balance. So you can still keep casting and counter powers. But once you go outside of fire themed maps, because we are using these boots and this uh, shirt, you can just simply switch the boots out to other damage bonus ones. So for example, if you go in wild space, there are specific boots for there. And I would just keep the shirt because you've no real use of like the cooldown shirt here. Potentially maybe use the combat advantage bonus shirt like this one if you need still stats. And otherwise you can switch your head piece over to like the dark maidens ones for action point gain if you think you might make use of using your daily power a bit more. Then we go to the modifications and these are your armor kits and jewels. You'll see them right here. So we just have accuracy on all of those and then power here and then just combat advantage on all of these slots. Nothing goes in your shirt and pants for now. Then we go to our enchantments. This is the setup we use. You've got two jades there, two citrines. Doesn't matter what you have in defense, it can just be filler, but garnets would be ideal, of course. Utility, you have garnet as well for forte. Then you want to have an overload here for bonus damage. You can use, depending on the content, ones for damage against dragons, against fiends, against undead. Completely depends what content you're playing. And then one here just for the stats. Don't bother using overloads if you're just running easy content. Combat enchantment, you definitely want the lightning flash. And the bonus enchantment, you want the recharge speed. However, you can use the movement speed if you feel that will suit you better, particularly in multi-target to keep up when you're going from group to group. But now let's jump to artifacts. First of all, your primary artifact will want to be one that will cause a debuff on the target, will cause the target to take increased damage like this one right here. Keep in mind, there's a lot of different ones you can use, but just make sure you're using a different one from your other teammates for those artifact calls. Everybody will use the artifact at once, cause the enemy to take a ton of extra damage, and that's when you do your set rotation here for that 10 seconds artifact call. As for the secondary artifacts, these are just filler for giving item level and stats. Don't be afraid to use alternative ones, but these are exactly where the ones I have come from. Then we go to our boons and for our campaigns, we use these right here. Be sure to get like blessed resilience and lingering medicine for some survivability. Most definitely get demonic mastery for damage against fiends when running the latest dungeon, the Lair of the Mad Dragon, and then also in like demon web pits and depends on the content. And there are other boons here against specific enemies. Be sure to use them if you're running that type of content. For your guild, you want to be having the accuracy, defense, and like revive sickness when you might die, mount speed and zones, movement speed and dungeons that are easy. Then we go to our companions. This is what we use for single target. Any summoned companion you can use there that performs fairly well. Just be aware of support companions that increase the whole team's effectiveness by increasing their stats or just raw damage output. They can be better used while within end game groups. But when you are running multi target, there's like the Minotaur you can use, but there are, of course, a good few alternatives as well as you can check in this table. The companion equipment just comes from the new campaign, Mountain of Flame. We've got Enduring Precision here, but that comes from a Pacific companion, the Zaraxian Defector. So you might not have them, and if you don't, just use Precision here instead. Then we've got the Golden Cat, the Neverwinter Knight, the Bateri, which when you go in multi-target, I do recommend having the Spine Devil. And then Minsk, which when you're in multi-target, I do recommend having Igneous Skin, as that will boost your damage of your Searing Javelin and your Daunting Light. But again, prioritize the single target damage bonuses first. And then we just have our Staldorf here. You will want to have like the Tamed Velociraptor if you're running endgame groups. From there, we go to our mounts. And in our current page, you want to have a combat power like Golden Touch, Tunnel Vision, Legendary Giant Toad. Even Bigby's hand is okay, but not ideal. You can see them right here. Bigby is physical versus the others, which are magical, and you will generally have a greater magical damage boost than you have physical. For multi-target, I do recommend having like the Schools in Session from the Space Scubby mount, or even the Pegasus. Just do prioritize your single target power. Then we have Dominant Force here. I would recommend having like ferocity at hand for end game groups 
and then we go to our stable. We just have one tacticians, one executioner's covenant, and three warlords motivation. You could have one extra tacticians, but I haven't found it very necessary, or even an artificer's enticement. But again, it's only really going to affect your prophecy of doom, which you should be able to get back quick enough, at least if you have enough recharge speed, to after the artifact call, use it again at this set time. Otherwise, we just have some dominant insignias, two skill insignias and the rest brutality and you can see the exact count here for the colors we just have these five there but what is important is the encounter power damage and the crit severity then we have our consumables and belt items we just have flask of potencies from crafting squash soup as event food Sunlord's Gift Elixir from Invoking, and Ratatouille Guild Food. For our belt items, we have a Stone of Health, the Albert figurine here. However, you can alternatively have like the Dragonfire, or the Hawk, or even the Two Hickey, but the Albert is best. And then the other one, we could have like a Bell of Empowerment, just to increase the damage of our companion. I don't currently have one here. And that's pretty much it for the entirety of this build. The last thing to touch on is optimization. When you're going into those end game groups, you will be able to obtain a lot of boosts. You can see them just there for an example. And these are the different things I would switch around depending on what the group actually gives you. So like Mystic Aura or Runic Aura, definitely switch Dominant Force over to Ferocity. If you get like Portobello and Flapjack and Tutor, you can switch like one of your companion bonuses that give you combat advantage here over to like power instead and then you very simply switch the weapons which give you power boost over to like damage bonus ones like void touch salarium weaver and or switch out your ring which also gives you power over to like a damage boost one like there'll be ones against dragons against beholders against undead and then there's very simply encounter power damage one which is somewhat useful as well and you can see the different things i recommend you switching around depending on what you gain also if you get like the tamed raptor you also so want to switch out one of your companions to use that as it's a massive power boost which lets you switch off both your ring and your weapons for then gaining all the power and then gaining damage boosts there instead so that is pretty much it for the build again it's a solid baseline gives you max out 90 percent stats and ultimately i hope this helps also to show you how to play it it's pretty much the most complex class of any you can't just spam out your abilities you have a super strict order that you really need to follow in order to make use of perfect balance so that you're gaining that divinity back so you're not just left stranded not being able to cast your abilities as these good damage abilities have no cooldown pretty much and they just have that divinity cost so you've got to be using those you can't rely on these ones which ha do have cooldowns which are just far far inferior so again if you want to get good on arbiter you can it's a lot of work a lot of practice but it is possible there are a few players who do manage it for example pro goofy again you can follow him on twitch link in the video description below so once again thank you for watching a special thank you to all of these channel members for your extra support and we'll see you guys around goodbye for now